Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at ProPlus Design with Bruce McCaughey, who's going to talk today about some of the problems as well as some of the advances in fast spice as well as some of the complexities that have to be dealt with in some of the, the more advanced process nodes. Bruce, we've been hearing about fast spice for more than a decade. It seems to have finally caught on after years of languishing and just sort of dribbling along and people playing around with it. What's changed? What's and what still has to happen with fast spice to make it go even further? So really the, the key with, with fast spice adoption has been the increasing size and complexity of circuits. Uh, you know, you need to verify functionality, connectivity, then uh, the requirements for parasitics, you know, having detailed parasitic extraction in circuits. So all this has is, is created uh, circuit sizes and netlist sizes that traditional spice can't really handle. And so that's been something fast spice has been uh, excelling at for more than 10 years, and it's really uh, you know now a, a mainstream tool, I would say, uh, in the design flow. Is it primarily just a function of there's so much complexity now that you need to raise it up at abstraction level? Uh, yeah, I think I think it's just purely a, a capacity issue is what you're what it boils down to, and a throughput issue, a turnaround time. So you need to be able to verify a chip, and you know the, the spice is great for doing blocks and, and little pieces and you can get really great accuracy on that. But when you get up to millions of, of devices, it's just simply a question of, you know, with Spice you can't even do it. And with the Fast Spice, you at least get some reasonable, uh, you know, approximations. You get some reasonable uh, timing and power information coming out of that. Now there's, there's been a big change uh, and, and recently, because of the, the increasing complexity with FinFET, with the increasing complexity of the circuits and sensitivities, that the Fast Spice approach uh, really is kind of running out of gas, and it can't achieve uh, accuracies that are acceptable anymore. And there's always been a, an accuracy trade-off between running spa, a spice and a fast spice tool. That, that trade-off's always been inherent and well understood, uh, and, but now that gap is growing. Uh, between the spice and fast spice to the point where the accuracy loss or gap is just too big. So we're really kind of uh, between a rock and a hard place uh, with our fast spice and spice tooling these days. So what comes after fast spice? I mean, we've got 10 nanometer coming on and the number of gates that we're going to be dealing with is going to be even larger. Right. So what we need, we need a tool with the capacity of fast spice to handle millions of gates and hundreds of millions of parasitics. But we need spice accuracy, and we need spice accuracies not just on the timing, but we need it on you know detail currents, on leakages, on power. We're calling that a new category of simulation. We call that Giga Spice, and Giga Spice is to have truly that spice accuracy that we need these days, but scale it up to hundreds of millions or billions of elements. So why don't you draw this out for us? What are, what are we looking at here? Sure, sure. So to illustrate it, uh, we really want to take a look at accuracy. All right, on this axis, and on this axis, we'll take a look at uh, capacity. And really, capacity and performance kind of go hand in hand, so we'll just plot them together, okay? And, and traditionally, we can kind of break this into quadrants. If you want high accuracy, then you're up here in the traditional spice world, okay? And if you wanted to have high capacity or performance, you're down here in the fast spice world. And where we really want to be is right up in here, right? This would be the ideal quadrant where you're getting perfect spice accuracy, but you're getting this fast spice uh, type of capacity. So this is the space that Giga Spice plays in. So what we uh, have innovated is a tool that can play in this space. which can go up and approach the highest limits of fast spice in terms of capacity and performance, but keep you in this uh, high accuracy range that's required for FinFET uh, design. Where was the crossover? Was it just FinFETs or was it, um, did it start before that? When did you start seeing the problems? Yeah, I think, I think it's been progressive. It wasn't just at FinFETs, but FinFET really pushed us over the edge. I think probably 45, 28 nanometers when you really started to feel the pain uh, with fast spice. So people were innovating different types of flows to cut out pieces of circuits and trying to run spice. But that's error prone. It's very cumbersome <laughs> to try to cut out netless. And that's been kind of the de facto flow. So it's been a combination of the fast spice to run a lot of vectors and try to verify functional uh, or also you know, um, connectivity. 
and using the spice for some kind of some cutout of some critical paths. So it's been a combination of the two tools. So what are we trying to, to map here that's, that's adding to the capacity so much? Is it um, power? Is it performance? What are we dealing with here? Uh, well, let, let's speak to the to the accuracy, right? So the thing that the thing that drives us over here in the spice world is the requirement for accuracy. And so, you know, with the requirements to have high performance and power simultaneously, which is driven by the, the move to mobile uh, devices driving the market versus you know traditionally desktop applications, which were not so power sensitive. Now that we're so sensitive on power. Uh, detailed currents, leakages uh, are really important. Furthermore, parasitics are, 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 are growing. And if you look at the, the FinFET device, so you have a, a gate wrapped around a fin, which is the channel. The uh, capacitance uh, between the gate and the fin is much higher than in a planar CMOS, right? In a planar CMOS, you uh, only get this two-dimensional uh, coupling between the uh, gate body or, or source and drain. In the case of the fin pet, you get this three-dimensional coupling because of the wraparound. And furthermore, since the fin is extending out into the drain and source on both sides, the coupling between gate, drain, and gate and source is also much higher on fin fets. And one of the tricks that FastSpice has always tried to do is to decouple the gate from the channel source and drain and, and use that as kind of a cut point for the matrix uh, to get uh, a better speed. But because of this strong coupling, you can't really choose those as cut points in the matrix. You have to solve the whole system simultaneously. Um, you know, and that's kind of getting into a little more detail, but, but FastSpice is an event-driven tool, similar to Verilog. But rather than having these zero to one transitions, FastSpice is having like 100 millivolt or 50 millivolt events. And uh, those events just don't work well when you have this strong coupling. So it's hard to separate gates. The gates kind of melt together. What happens when we move off a standard FinFET that we've been using now, the silicon, and move into, say, a gate, gate all around FinFET or potentially a tunnel FET? Does that get even uh, more data that you have to start dealing with? And it's just going to get more complex and more difficult. The models are going to become more difficult. You start getting into quantum effects in the device. Uh, this coupling will just become stronger as you shrink down uh, insulator thicknesses, maybe even grow the fins. So it, undoubtedly, the physics will just become more and more challenging. And that's going to bleed back into the circuit and make this, this circuit versus process interface also uh, more complex and more challenging. And those quantum effects start at 10 nanometers, am I correct? Boy, quantum effects really, uh, if you look at the, uh, you know, the gate uh, depletion effects, really started even a couple of generations ago. And it just becomes progressively uh, you know, more challenging as we push down into atomic uh, dimensions. So, so that's already been a story. If you look at the BSIM models, already including quantum effects for a few generations. So what happens when you go into a, one of the alternatives to uh, um, alleviate some of the problems with the interconnects has been uh, talking about uh, 2.5D and 3D stack die where you're, you're putting together multiple dies Right. or potentially even monolithically, but you're yeah. still dealing with much more data and, and many more issues. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what happens with on the SPICE side with that? SPICE, fast SPICE, GigaSPICE? Sure. So what happens there is that you care so much about the coupling. Uh, you know, you're having high-speed data links between, between chips through silicon vias, and, and essentially what it boils down to is you need a more detailed parasitic extraction, and that, you know, those requirements uh, push on through to the simulation side. And so naturally, the, the accuracy requirements uh, go up as well. And again, it gets back to coupling. Everything becomes coupled together. It's hard to partition it into pieces and, and isolate those pieces. You kind of have to simulate the whole system as one. And that's what uh, one of the primary drivers is in this 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 push towards uh, a gigaspice uh, realm. Well, you're, you're really pushing into the system level modeling and analysis and verification, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it just becomes hard. It becomes difficult, in other words, to abstract the system. So you can do that with maybe 10% accuracies. That's fine. So that's still great for functional design, right? You can still drive RTL that way. Uh, you can give reasonable timing. But if you really want to crank down the accuracies and you want to look at power, then you really need to go down into uh, a more detailed look at the system. So I would say it's not an either or. I would say that it's still a constellation of solutions. I think each of these have their place. 
I think the traditional FASFI still has its place in functional or connectivity verification. Uh, so it's not like this is completely gone or obsolete from the design flow. And of course, SPICE is not going to be displaced either. You still need uh, SPICE tools that can, can handle things like uh, you know small block simulation, standard cell characterization. You know That's not where the Giga SPICE is really playing, because that's really for very small circuits. So I would say that this is simply a, a new tool that's required in, in advanced design particularly in FinFET, but it's not displacing uh, uh, necessarily other tools in the flow. How does this connect into the yield side of the equation? So design engineers tend to think on one side of the, the picture here, which is let's, let's figure this out from the yeah. standpoint of let's build this thing and what, how do we build it? Uh, how do we verify it? But right. then there's a whole other section which goes with this of, that they don't necessarily see, which is, is the chip even going to yield when they finally produce it? Absolutely. That's another thing being driven by these atomic dimensions and the scaling. So and now that we're down to the point where the number of dopant atoms in a channel may be in the order of tens of dopant atoms instead of hundreds or thousands, you can imagine variation of just a few atoms can cause big variations in threshold voltages. And so, and these are random processes uh, where uh, neighboring devices that are very close together uh, could have quite different uh, you know, characteristics. And so variations bigger and harder to control. Uh, so the yield uh, management, uh, yield prediction, and, and, and yield improvement are, are huge issues uh, in, in the, the FinFET design. Uh, it's a huge issue for planar CMOS in 28 and 20 nanometers as well. It's not just a, a FinFET issue. And so uh, it really needs to be considered up in front in the design flow and not as an afterthought uh, like in previous uh, generations of technology. And with um, Fast Spice, Giga Spice, um, you're able to do many more trade offs too, right? That's Fairly right. quickly. That, that's a great point, you know. And that's where uh, Fast Spice really doesn't have the accuracy needed for yield prediction. And there's a lot of reasons for that. One of the reasons would be because when you're doing uh, yield prediction, you really need to have accuracy out at three or four sigma. Okay, and a lot of the tricks that are done in fast spice to try to accelerate those tricks don't always work uh, far from nominal. Okay, and uh, but yet uh, a giga spice does. And another reason for that is in the fast spice traditionally you build table models of devices, but if every device is unique or different, uh, those tables don't work very well. So you, you need to uh, bypass the tables and just use the BSIM models directly to get the accuracy that you need for yield prediction. And uh, giga spice uh, uses the uh, the, the transistor models natively rather than trying to build tables. Bruce McGahee, thanks for a great explanation. Hey, it's been great. Thank you for having me.